I see people in white coats, it makes me nervous. <laughs> What a great day for Indiana. This is a victory for legislators, pharmacists, customers, and the entire state. When I suggested this bill be signed in Rochester right after it was passed, I envisioned this would happen on the courthouse lawn or maybe in the courtroom or city council chambers. I never thought it would take place here. But in reality, it does make sense. You know, pharmacy is um, where this whole meth lab crisis has got its start um, because of the unchecked sale of pseudoephedrine. But now because of this law, hopefully pharmacy profession can demonstrate that this is where clandestine meth labs end. This law does not enhance the pharmacy business, but it certainly enhances the pharmacy profession and the pharmacist's role as healthcare providers. We, have, we now have a strategy and the tools needed to make a proactive role in safeguarding our communities and serve against the dangers of meth. I obviously get a lot of recognition for the concept of pharmacy legitimization, but this was a group effort. Way many to mention, but I need to point out a few of them because it's hard to believe that just over a year ago we got this process started when Val Pemberton had seen enough. He asked me and other community leaders, law enforcement, to get together and to discuss meth labs in our county and to find a solution. Today we celebrate what a true grassroots effort can accomplish and along with Val's bulldog perseverance <laughs> I'd like to thank Mark Williamson. Mark was invaluable in our effort. He spent countless hours helping gather data, clicked, correcting my grammar, <laughs> creating and updating our website, and just being there to create and help spread the word about our different approach. And Sheriff Sailors, law enforcement has long pushed for the prescription requirement, but Chris helped share our position with his colleagues around the state that this was a concept worth considering and his participation in the clean team really provided the one-two punch that has resulted in a dramatic reduction of meth activity in this county. <laughs> Pharmacist Richard Kumler is a Kroger Pharmacy District Manager and we met and talked about the issue and we started talking about what we wanted to do and he uh, sent me an email one day and he goes, are you modeling this after the Arkansas law? And I said, what's the Arkansas law? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that was the, the, the tipping point where we came up for what eventually became Senate Bill 80. He also wrote a very elegant professional journal article that went into the IPA journal and distributed around the state to pharmacists. Local pharmacist Angela Miller from Walmart. For seeking the approval, first chain pharmacist really to seek the approval uh, in the first chain store to adopt our approach. Her I can still remember she called me up and said, uh, I got approval. And I said, so you got approval for what? <laughs> and she goes, to do everything you asked. And, uh, and that was really the leverage we needed to kind of get the other big boys in town to, uh, to join in and, and get us going. Prosecutor Rick Brown for crafting a workable local ordinance and sit down with us and help draft the language that later became the initial version of Senate Bill 80. And of course, all the city and county elected officials and attorneys who embraced our bold notion and passed two ordinances in both in the city and in the county. Rochester Telephone Company Channel 4 for all their coverage and documenting and creating great video presentations that we've been able to share on our website. Brad Rivette and James Amy of Acura Pharmaceuticals for embracing the challenge of developing and marketing uh, meth products with meth deterrents. Their product, Nexafed, makes this a process of legitimization work. And of course, our IPA Executive Director, Randy Hitchens, for embracing our concept and answering countless media inquiries in Indianapolis. 
Bill Cowan was our, our pharmacy group lobbyist who pulled off nothing short of a miraculous Hail Mary late in the fourth quarter <laughs> to save this piece of legislation. He essentially got all the opposition who had spent millions of dollars trying to kill our bill to flip and show support for the final version. Representative Steve Davison and Ben Smaltz for perfecting and defining the legitimization concept and their passion in the State House was fun to witness and key to getting it through the House twice. Representative Smaltz's testimony on the House floor was the most passionate testimony I've ever seen. <laughs> Virtually in a few short moments, he changed many in opposition into supporters of this legislation with his passionate plea. And certainly, last but not least, Senator and hopefully our next Attorney General, Randy Head. <laughs> <laughs> I find it difficult to find words to express my gratitude for listening and constantly commuting, communicating with me throughout this process. We did a lot of Facebook messaging and text messaging and we got it done. His ability to navigate this bill through a complex process against significant big money opposition is truly remarkable and the state of Indiana is going to be a better place because of your passion. And now it's my extreme pleasure to welcome the governor to Rochester. One of his top priorities and will, uh, has been and will continue to be Indiana's battle with addiction to opiates and methamphetamine. And by supporting and signing this bill into law, he has demonstrated his commitment. Please join me in welcoming Indiana's 50th governor, Mike Pence. Thank you so very much, uh, Harry. Thank you for uh, uh, so many things. Your kindness today, your leadership uh, in this effort, uh, truly inspiring. All the best ideas in Indiana come from Indiana, from the people of Indiana. And Harry, because of your leadership here uh, and the creativity with which uh, these extraordinary legislators, law enforcement officials, uh, city officials, county officials came together to craft a solution. You are changing lives, uh, not only here in Fulton County, but by your creativity and your energy and your compassion, you are changing lives in Indiana for generations to come, and I thank you. Eric. Thank you. I, am, uh, I am honored to be with you today, and, and uh, uh, I, uh, I appreciate you all making time to be here. Um, uh, I, I'm here to uh, ceremonially sign uh, into law two pieces of legislation that are part of a comprehensive strategy to combat drug abuse uh, and drug addiction in the state of Indiana. But I'm also here just to say thank you. Uh, I'm here to say thank you uh, to a local community that said we can do better, who saw the way that lives were being shattered uh, by, uh, by drug abuse and addiction in this community and said, we, could, we can sit down, we can figure this out with who's your common sense. And, uh, and so I'm here really to pay a debt of gratitude and a debt of honor uh, to a community uh, that has come together uh, and, uh, and made this change in our laws possible. Um, we all know that community pharmacists uh, serve a vital role in our cities and towns. Harry and I were just chatting. He said that uh, the, only, the only disruption in service here at uh, at this pharmacy was the Civil War. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty good string. Uh, uh, but uh, the longest, I think the, the oldest business here in Fulton County, um, and obviously a centerpiece of the community. But our pharmacists, so well represented here uh, by so many others uh, who wear the white coats, um, uh, make a difference in the lives of our family each and every day. They are part of the professional community that's there. I'm delighted to be joined today by my uh, senior officer, the First Lady of Indiana, Karen Pence, is traveling with me today. Um, but I always tell people, while I'll never have a higher honor than being governor of the state of Indiana, it's not the highest office that I hold. Uh, the highest office I hold is I'm a dad right? and a mom. Uh, we got two in college. We just uh, said good morning to one this morning up in Chicago and uh, another one in college and one in the service right now. 
but we're parents. And, uh, and to recognize the role that, that uh, pharmacies play in the lives of families, the practical need uh, for, uh, for our pharmacists to be able to provide products to families at the point of the need in a timely way, was that was the intersection of difficulty we had here from the very outset. The convenience of law-abiding citizens and families that might be facing the need for medications in the dark of the night uh, running uh, headlong against those who would uh, uh, who would seek to collect ephedrine and pseudephedrine for nefarious purposes. Um, and the solution that was crafted here in Fulton County and with the creative energies of, uh, of Harry Webb and all of so many of you are gathered here today met that moment uh, with creativity and ingenuity and a respect for law-abiding citizens but a seriousness about the nature of this challenge. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, not only uh, the, the pharmacists who are here and public officials, but I also want to single out your mayor uh, here in the city of Rochester, uh, Ted Denton. Uh, I know that it was uh, after this solution was first forwarded, uh, you were able to advance this uh, in an ordinance here in Rochester, Indiana. Uh, and uh, uh, according to reports that, that I polled in preparation today, uh, in Rochester, Indiana, here in Fulton County, after that was implemented, there was a 50% reduction in pseudoephedrine sales and in meth labs in this community. Mayor, I want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you. And your thank you. The local leadership at its finest is what we're really celebrating here today. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, this ceremonial signing is a recognition uh, of that. I also want to I also want to uh, pay a, a debt of thanks and gratitude to the members of the General Assembly who are here, who played such an important role in bringing this about. Uh, Representative Tim Harmon is with us. Representative Bill Friend. Um, you just heard uh, a wonderful tribute. I saw that speech by Representative uh, Ben Smaltz, who was in my office again and again. <laughs> over the course of the last couple of years and Ben never gave up on believing that there was a way we could get this done that could save lives um, and Ben I want to thank you I want to thank you for your tenacity in the House of Representatives and for the compassion that all of you showed in moving this forward I truly do. but to uh, Senator Randy Head um, I, I really want to commend you uh, and it was uh, uh, you know, we after the legislature adjourns, I try and get out about the state, and we try and celebrate the accomplishments of the people of Indiana through their their general assembly. Uh, but uh, Randy's a, a little bit far from home right now, but he said to me, Governor, there's only one place, there's only one place that you should sign that bill into law, and he said it was in Fulton County in Rochester, at Webb's Pharmacy, and uh, it's because he understood where this idea was born and more than any other single member uh, of your state legislature, Senator Randy Head has made a difference. In the change. Sometimes people ask me, they say, what keeps you up at night as governor? And I tell them it's, uh, it's probably not what you read about in the newspaper yesterday or the day before. It's this. It really is. I see the sheriff here and other law enforcement uh, personnel. I mean, we are not alone in Indiana. We're among states across the country that are struggling with a rising tide of drug abuse and drug addiction. 2014, uh, leaning into this effort with vigorous law enforcement, we actually led the nation in meth lab busts in the state of Indiana. Uh, I want to promise you as, as uh, citizens of this state uh, that, uh, that our state is going to remain uh, uh, diligent uh, and uh, uh, aggressive uh, in going hard after people who are selling drugs to our kids. Um, I'm very proud that in this last session of the General Assembly with the support of all of these members we passed bipartisan legislation that increased the penalties on drug dealing in the state of Indiana. We're sending a message all across this state if you're selling these poisons to our kids we're coming after you and we're going to rip out these drug rings root and branch all across the state. <laughs> But we've also, uh, we've also, in the very same breath, I've recognized that, and I expect the sheriff would back me up on this, we can't just arrest our way out of this problem. I mean, it's, uh, 
although we we have to continue to be energetic and you know as I mentioned we've we we pulled drug rings out of the, out of literally out of their beds in the dark of night in Indianapolis Connorsville Indiana a task force that pulled a drug ring out we're staying hard after it around the state of Indiana but in the same breath I'm very proud in this last session of the General Assembly we've also been increasing access uh, to life-saving overdose intervention drugs like uh, naloxone we've created the uh, Indiana Commission for drug abuse we've expanded Medicaid coverage for opiate and alcohol treatment programs we're actually building the first new mental health hospital in a generation in our capital city and today with this legislation, we're going to make it more difficult for criminals to obtain ephedrine and pseudoephedrine to produce meth, which has ravaged so many Hoosier communities uh, and, and destroyed so many promising young lives. So I just want you all to know this is a, this is a comprehensive effort uh, to deal with this crisis. Um, and, I, and I want to assure you the state of Indiana is going to continue uh, with enforcement and treatment and prevention uh, until we can show in this state that we are leading the way in holding to account people that are selling drugs to our kids, but we're also leading the nation in showing people caught up in drug abuse and addiction that there is help and there's a better way and help them find the way out. With that, I'm going to sign uh, two bills into law and, and, uh, and then look forward to Karen and I do to meeting as many of you as uh, aren't just here shopping. Uh, <laughs> you are all required to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm going to sign Senate Rolled Act 80 and Senate Rolled Act 161. Senate Rolled Act 80 is that which was crafted after the Fulton County model. Um, which, uh, which entrusts to a pharmacist's professional judgment uh, the, the decision to whether or not to make medicines available without a prescription. Um, it also uh, uh, requires uh, the INSPECT program uh, through uh, the state of Indiana to track ephedrine and pseudoephedrine dispensed across the state. Uh, the second piece of legislation uh, uh, is related uh, there too and uh, also is supportive of the same principles um, and I'm pleased to sign both of these measures in to law today uh, but let me let me uh, close with, with the way that I open and that is to simply uh, say thanks uh, thanks uh, to uh, Harry Webb uh, to Mayor Denton to Senator Head Representative Schmaltz uh, the members who are gathered here and to a community that just simply said we can do better uh, I really do think the greatest, uh, the greatest thing about Indiana is the people of Indiana, and the fact that we really don't we don't look either to Washington D.C. or even to Indianapolis to solve our problems. We solve them right here at home first. And I love celebrating this moment here in Fulton County because you all just said, looking at this crisis of of meth in your community, we can do better, and you did better, and you made a difference, and because you showed the way the other 91 counties of Indiana are going to be better for it. So thank you, Fulton County. Thank you for your leadership. God bless you. Citizen Action Committee combating methamphetamine manufacturing and abuse in Fulton County, Indiana, Rochester, Indiana, March 24, 2016. To Indiana State Senator Randy Head, 
We wish to express our sincere appreciation for your steadfast persistence in passing Senate Bill 80. In our collective experience, we have never encountered a public servant more accessible, responsive, determined, and competent than you. Please accept the gratitude of the people of Fulton County for passing the solution to the meth lab elimination in Indiana. Sincerely, Citizen Action Committee, Fulton County, Indiana, Val Pemberton, Chairman, Harry Webb, Pharmacy Owner, Mark Williamson, Drug Free, Fulton County, Christopher Sailors, Fulton County Sheriff, Dick Belcher, President, First Federal Bank, Bob Peterson, Attorney, Retired, Gloria Carvey, Director, Ivy Tech, Mark Smith, Smith Sawyer, and Smith, Rochester City Council, Jim Bryant, Customer Service, Zimmer, Retired. We feel strongly about Representative Smoltz as well. We That's right. One for him. <laughs> Seems like you read that. Read this? I think I'm getting this because no one here listened to Cal County. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Citizen Action Committee, combating methamphetamine manufacturing and abuse in Fulton County, Indiana, Rochester, Indiana, March 24, 2016. To Indiana State Representative Ben Smoltz. We wish to express our sincere appreciation for your steadfast persistence in passing Senate Bill 80. Your timely actions in support of SEA 80 during critical phases of the legislative process were outstanding and very productive. Please accept the gratitude of the people of Fulton County for your strong role in passing the solution to meth lab elimination in Indiana. Sincerely, Citizen Action Committee, Fulton County, Indiana. Val Pemberton, Chairman. Harry Webb, Pharmacy Owner. Mark Williamson, Drug Free, Fulton County. Christopher Sailors, Fulton County Sheriff. Dick Belcher, President, First Federal Bank. Bob Peterson, Attorney, Retired. Gloria Carvey, Ivy Tech Director. Mark Smith, Smith, Sawyer and Smith, Rochester City Council, Jim Bryant, Customer Service, Zimmer, retired. <laughs>